I'm DJ Baba. I've been working professionally the last nine years. There is a lot said by the media about what London club scene actually is. But I wanted to get the inside view from the DJs about what they think. I don't know if DJs do plan sets. I, I certainly never plan a set. I don't really plan it. I like, I, like, I like the live aspect of going out there. I've never once, ever, ever done that, and I never will. I never plan any sets. I never, no, I never plan. I don't really work sets out. I don't plan a specific set. Uh, I tend not to plan my sets. In fact, I never prepare my sets. I can't plan a set. I've heard about this. I've heard about people who plan sets. I don't often plan my sets. The only time I plan my sets if I'm playing is if I'm playing a really big event. Sometimes I do plan my sets um, if it's a really big gig. Three quarters plus of what I do isn't huge events. It's sort of clubs that range in capacity from sort of 800 to 1500 people. And at those, I certainly wouldn't plan anything. I might, I might know what I was going to do for the first couple of records, but no more than that. Once you've got the first three tracks in your head and then the others, they'll just come. I'd like to know where I'm starting and then move on from there. So as long as I've got my first five tunes in order, I know it's going to be the right way. And I'll work out beforehand a few records that I know fit well together so that they're going to be easy to play. I'm not really specific, but I have a general idea of what kind of music I'm going to play. <laughs> I prepare my record bag so I know where everything is, so I don't get lost. You can really get to know the records that you have in your CD wallet or your, or your box of records and know them inside out. I think that's the main thing. I make sure I take with me a vast selection of the possible records that I might want to play that I'm into at that time. I like to basically go to every set uh, with a box of everything. So that uh, when I go to a gig, I've got um, a reasonable amount of every kind of music in my, in my record collection. It's, it's basically knowing what music you've got. Just before I leave the house, an hour before I leave, I'll put myself in my room and just remind myself of my new favourite tunes and just kind of check out what the kind of vibe I want to play on. Once you decide that, you think what the party's like, who's playing before you. What I do have is I do have Whenever I go out, I have the records I'd love to really want, I do want to play. I don't always play those because I think if you're the kind of DJ who plays only ever what you want to play, um, then you might not always completely rock the club. I think it's important to basically be prepared to adjust to whatever people's moods are when you go into a club. The best DJ sets is when you feel part of the group. So it's not like you're dictating, it's almost like you're following. If they're reacting to a certain kind of music, you're following what they're doing, in it, essentially, because they're telling you that they like that. So you go, you like that, I'll give you some more of that. It's, it's kind of not the other way. I'm not telling you, I'm looking at you and you're telling me what to do. You know, you take it tune by tune, reading the crowd's reaction every, every tune, every step of the way. Just, just generally following the vibe of the crowd. The vibe of the night dictates what I play. It's almost, I, I, I really don't, it sounds strange, but I don't actually kind of know half the time what I'm pulling out. It's almost like I'm being sent there. I know it sounds very bizarre, but I'm kind of being sent there. The night is just, you're connected to the crowd. A real DJ has to really become a part of the crowd. It's not like me and them, it's us. Something can happen on a dance floor if you haven't planned it that's more exciting than if you work it out religiously at home. I think there is a relationship that you form with a crowd if the party is right. The, the skill for you is to try and <clears throat> program those records in, in the right way so that the crowd just goes up and up and up and up and up and then, you know, and you, you get that that, that symbiosis of, of minds and then you just as one and you just kind of control, take it down slightly, get, give everybody a little bit, bit of a breather for a second and then just kind of take it up and they're dictating it to you as much as, you know, you feel you might be dictating it to them. It's, it's just a, it's a two-way thing, you know. London life is so busy. People don't have much time to connect with each other. Most of my friendship and community 
has started from nightclubs. I find that it's easy to connect with people there. Dance music has this interesting, um, I guess, lack of acceptance by the older generation because of this, you know, the criminal justice bill in 94 and this idea of repetitive beats and it's obviously, obviously all drug induced. To them, it's an ugly sound. Um, the electronic sound is, is totally alien. So from that starting point, because they don't like the music, they think there must be something wrong with the people. It really breaks with the tradition of a, of a, of a traditional song that has a, a verse, a bridge and a chorus. In dance music, it's just, like, it's just more like a vibe thing and you just have seven, eight minutes of music. So that, that is rebellious in its own way from a musical point of view. But the people that are associated with dance music, they, they definitely have that certain rebellious element in this, this scene is, uh, is obviously a non-conformist. Dance music was a youth movement. In 1990, between 1993 and, and 2000, it was a youth movement like it hasn't been seen in this country since God knows when, since the early 70s. Um, it was something that the adults had absolutely no idea about. Yeah, people's, people's perception outside outside of clubbing or dancing or whatever, they do get a distorted view of it. Drugs do exist on the dance scene. I'd be, you know, I'm no liar. I'm not, I'm not here to be some sort of hollow uh, PR person. Yeah, people's views of the scene, I mean, have been infected really by um... Um, by the media and, and kind of scare stories and, and drugs things and this, that and the other, you know. But I think that's probably the case for so many things that people don't know a lot about or that people aren't very passionate about. Every good form of music has been, had, a, had some sort of scene behind it, whether it was rock and roll or jazz or... And, and every time when it, these, these uh, genres were being invented, um, they were seen as the evil music of the time. What the media often don't get is if you go to anywhere where there's loads of sort of 18 to 30 year olds, there's drugs. If you go to a pub that has nothing to do with dance music, there are drugs. If you go to a concert which has got absolutely nothing to do with dance music but still appeals to that same demographic, there's an equal amount of drugs. People taking things to get off their heads has been going on for thousands of years. So dance music in that sense is nothing new. People have always gotten out of their heads. And, you know, in some cultures, alcohol is, is frowned upon and, and yet it's legal here. So I think there's a very strange moralistic duplicity in this country. It's a drug laden society, either legal or illegally. You get a certain kind of pattern springing up with, with you know, the, talking of this, the stresses of, of modern day life. Some people have to just slightly release that. Um, some of us are lucky, just hearing music in the right situation releases that completely. Some people need a little help. It doesn't have to be a, a life of excess. It can be purely about the fun of going out and dancing and and hearing good music and, and being out with your friends. Never hang up your dancing shoes, because the norm is to hang up your dancing shoes, have a family, settle down, and get a normal job. Uh, and that's, of course, something that DJs, you always hear all the time. Um, the, no the norm should be that you never give up your dancing shoes, and that you always have you know, that little bit of release, as my sister and I always say.